Hello, welcome again to another session of Digital Slide Review. I'm Dr. Lewis Hostel, and our program today, again, uh, courtesy of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Our case today is another of the uh, somewhat unusually encountered uh, uh, GI cases. Uh, this 55-year-old uh, man who's uh, HIV positive and has experienced some rectal discharge Maybe you could call it diarrhea. Uh, sometimes it's just kind of a mucoid uh, discharge. Uh, he undergoes colonoscopy and several uh, biopsies are obtained. Uh, here's a representative uh, section of these. And at low power, these uh, three fragments look uh, fairly unremarkable. Uh, we don't see any displacing uh, of the architecture. We don't see any expansion of the glands. Uh, we don't see uh, granulomas or other specific inflammatory infiltrates. You see a little hemorrhage here in some of the uh, uh, superficial areas, although that can be uh, fairly uh, nonspecific. Uh, so looking uh, through this, uh, we might just uh, look at these and say uh, no diagnostic abnormality, a little bit of edema here, but uh, nothing to suggest a particular uh, anomaly. Um, however, if we were to do that, uh, we might uh, want to think twice about uh, the sorts of things uh, that come into that differential consideration. So what do we do when we have a seemingly normal uh, GI biopsy? Well, um, uh, one of the important things I think to consider is the magic of uh, so-called deepers uh, and getting additional sections, particularly if they've seen something uh, at endoscopy, uh, the fact that it didn't show up on our first uh, superficial sections uh, probably happens maybe 15%, 15, 20% of the time, and the deeper levels will reveal a focal lesion that we just haven't seen on the uh, initial uh, sections. The other thing to think about is the possibility of occult infection, um, and there are several things that come to mind in that category, CMV, enteritis, uh, can have just a few scattered cells, very minimal inflammation in some circumstances. Sometimes uh, Kaposi's C sarcoma or herpes uh, uh, virus type 8, uh, spirochetosis, and cryptosporidia uh, are also things that need to be considered in the differential diagnosis of a normal biopsy. Um, occult malignancy can sometimes fool us, and uh, looking in the lacteals, the vasculature, uh, to detect whether or not you've got uh, endolymphatic or endovascular spread of tumor is uh, worthwhile. And then, uh, particularly in the more uh, uh, pediatric age group, but also uh, some adults, uh, metabolic disease or other things like melanosis um, and various uh, 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 disorders of metabolism uh, can be considered. So if we were to go back to this biopsy or a similar biopsy, um, and look again uh, with that differential in mind. Uh, here we uh, can go down onto higher magnification and think about in an HIV positive person, we should be thinking about uh, occult infection. Uh, and in fact, as we look at uh, this uh, slide, uh, something should stand out to us a little bit. And that is notice here that instead of a pink brush border, we have a slightly blue-tinged brush border along these enterocytes. And uh, if you uh, squint up close to the screen, uh, you should be able to see a little degree of uh, filamentous uh, uh, architecture there. Uh, now, this uh, is uh, characteristic of uh, spirochetosis, where you get a slight bluing of the uh, brush border uh, with filamentous uh, spirochetes standing on edge uh, within and betwixt the uh, normal microvilli of the enterocytes. We don't see in the vessels any evidence of CMV, but we should look. We don't see evidence in the crypts of uh, cryptosporidia, but we should look. Uh, we don't see an abnormality of the stroma to suggest uh, herpes. We don't see granulomas uh, or histiocytes uh, filled with other bacterial agents. Uh, to suggest um, uh, occult granulomatous or uh, fungal or mycobacterial disease, but we do see uh, this uh, spiroketal uh, proliferation on the uh, brush border. 
So intestinal spiral ketosis uh, is caused by uh, primarily two species of brachyspora. Uh, it is more common in HIV positive patients and often is just asymptomatic, uh, but it can produce a diarrheal or discharge uh, type of uh, symptomatology. Uh, interestingly, in the non-HIV population, it is more prevalent in the developing world, uh, present in up to 32% of uh, biopsies in some studies. Uh, it's very rarely associated with invasive infectious disease. Uh, and so treatment is usually not required, but if there is uh, symptomatology, if there is invasive disease, then usually metronidazole will uh, take care of it quite nicely. And if you're in doubt, although uh, really the, the uh, bluish uh, blush to the brush border is uh, virtually diagnostic, you can do spirochete stains such as a Warthensari, a Dieterle, or Steiner stain uh, to confirm your impression. Immunohistochemistry has also been used. Uh, most labs don't have immunohistochemistry specific for uh, treponemas or other things, but there is some cross-reactivity with other uh, spirochetal uh, disorders. So that's our uh, case for today. Uh, just to review, uh, again, normal looking biopsy, no other disorders. Uh, always look closely at your brush border and see if you can't pick out the blue blush uh, that is characteristic of spiroketosis. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Our final stein out diagnosis today is intestinal spiroketosis. We would encourage you to uh, come back and check out the presentation slides, study them for yourself. Uh, if you like this video and you learned something, please share it with your friends. Um, and uh, we hope that you'll subscribe because we certainly plan to post more uh, valuable com content uh, in the days ahead. And uh, we welcome your participation in the project by providing uh, feedback, suggestions, uh, ideas for topics you'd like to see covered. Uh, we will get to them. Uh, and uh, until then, uh, we will see you next time. Thanks.